City of Mesa Planning and Zoning Board public hearing for Wednesday, January the 17th, 2018. Um, as you know, we, as you watch the video, there was a reference to the blue cards. Um, at this time, if you choose to speak at this hearing on any of the cases, this would be the time to fill those cards out. I saw some, have any of them come forward? John? Is there anybody wishing to speak today? Then we're going to need those blue cards filled out. I did not fill the card out. Then, you know, if you wouldn't mind, I'm going to need you to go to the back and then get those right now. Uh, which case are you? I would put that at the... Tom, are you going to help her with that? Okay, thank you. see this view very often. What's that? It shows the whole crowd from that camera over there. You ready for this? Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah. I was expecting a bigger crowd. Me too.
One three, of the it's three two zero. This is the one. Three two zero. I just read that. So these, so are these all these zero? They're five? all the same. Yes. That's the general plan case. Okay. But we're going to treat them. All. We're going to. So three two zero. Okay. Yeah, three two zero. And this must be three two. Yeah. I'll go tell them. Okay. okay. At this point, six, nothing. Six. Nothing. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> At this point, the blue cards that we have received pertain to cases that are not on our consent agenda. And are there any others still coming forward? Okay. So let's begin with the read of our consent agenda. And Tim, if you would, Tim Boyle, if you wouldn't mind doing that. I would be honored to read the consent agenda. Items on consent agenda. Item number two, 2A, approval of minutes from December 9th and December 20th study sessions. Items to take action on the following cases. Item 3A. Chair, just, could you read that again? Make sure you got the dates right and said both the uh, study and the regular sessions. Just be sure. Minutes from the December 19th, 2017 and December 20th, 2017 study sessions and regular hearing my first thumbs up of the day. Item 3A, ZON 17-00289, District 6, the 3500 block south of Crisman Road alignment, east side, located north of Elliott Road on the east side of Crisman Road. Site plan review uh, continued from December 20th, 2017. Staff recommendation withdrawn by staff. Number four, discuss and make a recommendation to the City Council on the following zoning cases, 4A, ZON 17 00324, District 2, the 1800 block of South Wrecker Road, East Side, located north of Baseline Road on the east side of Wrecker Road, rezoning from AG to RS 43 BIZ, and site plan review. Continued from December 20th, 2017, staff recommendation, continuance to February 21st, 2018. Item 4B, ZON 17 0033. Five, District 5, the 1300 to 1400 blocks of North Power Road, East Side, located on the east side of Power Road and the north side and south side of Halifax Drive, rezoning from OC to ID-1 and site plan review. Continued from December 20th, 2017, staff recommendation, continuance to February 21st, 2018. Okay, thank you, Tim. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. A motion to approve the consent agenda as read. Thank you, Dane. Is, I, I is there second a second? It. Thank you, Shelley. Any discussion? If not, please vote. Motion pass, passes unanimously, so thank you. If any of you happen to be here for any of those cases, you're welcome to stay or leave at this time. Which leads us to, to <clears throat> one primary case and two companion cases, which we will be discussing at the at the same time, although, just a reminder, we'll be voting on those individually when the time comes. Uh, the first is item 5A, um, ZON 17-00572, District 5, the 5800 through 40, the 5900 blocks of East Thomas Road, South Side and 3400 through 3500 blocks of North Wrecker Road, West Side, um, minor general plan amendment to change Character type from mixed use activity district to neighborhood. And in, in conjunction with that, we will also be reading case 6A, which is ZON 17 00320, District 5, same parcel dealing with a rezone from RS 90 to RSL 4.5 pad and site plan review. And the third case is item 7A, 
Villas at Red Mountain, District 5, same location. And this would be the preliminary plat approval. And um, that is it. So it looks like we're going to have some fun this afternoon. And as we begin, Leslie, we'll turn some time over to you and, and do a presentation. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Um, as you stated, this is a request for a minor general plan amendment to change the character type from mixed-use activity district to neighborhood. Also a rezoning request from RS90 to RSL 4.5 PAD with site plan review and a preliminary plat for a plat titled The Villas at Red Mountain. Um, this site is located on the immediate southwest corner of Thomas and Wrecker Road. Um, it's approximately 27 acres. Um, the applicant's proposing to build a subdivision in this location, um, but the proposal is at odds with our current general plan designation of mixed use activity district, which is typically a commercial um, type use. Um, staff is recommending denial of this request um, based on the fact that it is not consistent with the general plan, um, the Falcon Field sub area plan, or the Falcon Field economic activity strategic plan, area strategic plan. Um, the Approval of this um, would diminish the city's ability to achieve our community goals and improving the city's job to housing, ra housing ratio. Um, the general plan states some specific, um, specific things to help protect our employment character areas um, that we have, and mixed use activity district does allow for some offices and that type of thing. Um, Wrecker Road has historically been kind of that boundary for what we expected to see um, go for more of a um, office or commercial development with Wrecker Road East kind of being that dividing line for where the residential exists out in the area. Um, to the north and west of here, we have some existing um, heavy industrial uses and some of the concern with the residential bleeding across Wrecker and coming over into this area um, creates a concern that it's going to be more difficult um, in addition to taking up space that could be used for um, larger commercial or employment uses in the area. It also would create bringing more residential properties closer to those other sites where there might be bigger users or um, industrial or employment users that are wanting to go in those areas, but they're going to be um, less interested in the property if there's going to be residences that may be coming in to oppose those cases and so on. So the further west you go with residential um, with that, it makes it more difficult to market that property for those types of uses, and the city doesn't have a ton of that space. Um, where it seems to be that we have several cases that have come a lot of interest lately in building a lot of houses. <coughs> we haven't seen as much come forward with the employment uses, but we are seeing changes in that. We are seeing um, more interest in our pre-submittal processes and recent cases up in the Falcon Field area. There's been some recent branding efforts and so on to try and bring some of those things to this area, um, as well as our gateway area. When you have um, land around an airport, it's very important to maintain for employment. Um, the general plan states that um, it, the importance of the city to continue to grow our economic base and create jobs within our city so people aren't having to travel outside of Mesa to go to work, that they actually can work and live in their community. Um, there's a specific statement in the general plan that says City of Mesa will do everything necessary to protect these areas um, from residential encroachment, promote them aggressively, and develop them to their highest economic potential um, to help us continue to grow that housing to jobs ratio and be able to create a better sustainable community for our citizens. Um, Another thing that uh, I feel it's important to note, um, the applicant's also proposing a rezoning for a 110 lot subdivision for a small lot subdivision, RSL 4.5, um, with private streets and gated entrance. Um, something to consider is to the west of this property, we've already had interest, we've already had people com coming to us or contacting us asking about future residential development to the west. Um, the proposed um, development that we have before us is really designed um, because if this general plan amendment were to be approved and this rezoning for the subdivision did go forward, um, we took a look at it in an, with the idea that we wanted to provide buffers to the west and to the south so that this um, we built those buffers into the subdivision to protect future employment users because to the west and the south, are it is employment in the general plan, and we do have some site plans that have been considered in the past for those sites that do have offices and hotels and such 
on those properties um, that were proposed. Whether or not they'll ever go forward, we don't know. Um, but something to consider is the design of this subdivision is very much just its own subdivision. Um, one thing to consider as a board is how much, if this were to go forward as residential, how much are you willing to consider to go west with residential? And then we haven't created a subdivision that's creating a neighborhood. We're creating an individual neighborhood that's gated. Um, it has you know, nice open space and some of those things within its own community, and that's all very important. But if we did see future residential to the west, something to consider is we haven't provided a design that could lend itself to connecting with that because the idea is that we would have um, we would have employment in those locations. So it's just another um, factor to consider that maybe an arterial street is a better buffer between residential and going to offices or employment than having a landscape tract and not being able to know what's coming in the future and it makes it difficult to design a neighborhood. So all things to consider. Um, based on the fact that staff has um, recommended um, denial on the general plan and the fact that the general plan is um, not consistent with the rezoning request, um, the general plan amendment would have to be approved first before it would go forward. Um, but the general plan or the rezoning request is for a 110 lot subdivision with open space and um, design elements that are consistent with um, our site plan process and with our PAD, um, the improvements that they need to justify the PAD. So if the general plan were um, to be approved and the board wanted to recommend approval on the, um, the zoning, we do have conditions of approval that can make some slight improvements to connectivity of the area. It doesn't really address that um, buffer that I raised or creating a neighborhood to the west because we don't just don't know what could happen to the west in the future. Um, but we would recommend approval on the site plan that's presented if the general plan were to move forward um, on this. So with that, I will turn it back over to you. Thank you, Leslie. Um, are there any questions for staff at this point? Can I ask yeah. a, a quick one? Just as I'm, I'm kind of perusing the difference between the RS and the, the RSL, that's what they're, the change would be, right? What do you see are the primary uses that are allowed under RS that this would, that would lend themselves to be the mixed use activities that are slated on here? Mr. Chairman, Board Member Boyle, um, RS, um, as far as residential services, I guess I'm not totally understanding your question. Well, it, it's changing from, let's see. Oh, from RS-90. From RS-90 to RS-4.5. Okay. What do you see are the main, the reasons for that? Like, what does RS-90 allow you to do here that what fits with the general plan that, that is not what they're uh, going for right now? Other than, I mean, it seems like they're, they're talking about smaller lots, which I understand that, but. Mr. Chairman, Board Member Boyle, um, RS-90 is, the, uh, it has historically been kind of a, it, a holding zoning. It is a residential zoning. If they wanted to come in and build 90,000 square foot lots, they could come in with houses on 90,000 square foot lots without going through this rezoning process. And it is at odds with our general plan, but because it's currently that zoning district, then they could move forward with such a request. They're asking to rezone the property and the general plan, which was voted on by the citizens, showed this area as a mixed use activity district. And so that's the policy direction that we have to support seeing something that would either be commercial or office or something that fits that mixed use activity district category on this property. So with the mixed use, do you would, some of these RS capabilities we consider mixed use? Like, like it's currently zoned for sure. residential, but as part of the general 2040 plan or whatever, the thought was, well, we maybe we'd want this rezoned to something else at some point that would go kind of along with this, even though that's not what the zoning was originally. So uh, Chair Board Member Boyle, let me take a stab at that too. So the property current zoning was established, I'm sure I'd have to go back to verify, where the property was annexed into the city and we did the comparable zoning. It hasn't been rezoned since. So that's why it's sitting there without RS-90. And 
our general plans have called for different use in the property, so they're not consistent, even the current zoning or what's proposed. So there's really no aspect of the RS that's helping to implement the mixed-use activity district or the employment district. Okay. All right. That's what I wanted. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Are there any other questions? <clears throat> okay. I'm sorry. Yes, Shelly, um, go right I was ahead. trying to find my button. When was it annexed into the city of Mesa? I, I, it's probably on my staff report, but I, you, I figured I could ask you faster than I could find uh, it. Mr. Chairman, Board Member Allen, that was in 1983. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Any others? If not, we'll turn some time over to the applicant. Ms. Blake, if you'll come forward. Tell us who you are. Absolutely. Good afternoon, or not evening yet. So good afternoon, board members. My name is Sean Lake, 77, or 1744 South Val Vista uh, in Mesa, uh, here on behalf of Desert Troon Companies, who is the current owner of the property, as well as Wendell Beck, uh, who is a resident of Mesa, who would like to develop the property consistent with the application. Uh, just by way of history, I've got a long history with this site, and I've been working with it, uh, for it, on it, for, I'm thinking about 12 years. In uh, around that time, I've, I've represented Desert Troon on other aspects where back in the 05, 06 era, back when Amazon was nothing more than a little bookstore, um, we tried to do a retail shopping center on this site back when all of us would go shop at a brick and mortar store and, and that's how we did our Christmas shopping. Uh, probably a good thing that that wasn't approved. Um, but at that time, there was overwhelming opposition from the Red Mountain Ranch Homeowners Association as well as the residents in the area opposed to that shopping center at this intersection. Uh, we did not proceed forward. We did not go for a vote because of the amount of opposition. And so we withdrew that application knowing that there was no use in trying to get a, a, a retail type of development with a you know, hotel approved. It, it just wasn't practical. Um, Fast forward many, many years, Desert Troon has come to me multiple times. What do we do with this property? Uh, as many of you know, Desert Troon is, is not a small player in the valley. Uh, for those that can think of Troon companies and, and a lot of the things that are occurring around the valley, they own office buildings, they own large master, have developed large master plan communities, large shopping centers. So they're, within their palette of uses, um, they've explored a lot of different uses on this site over the 12 years that they've owned it. Uh, and, and what could work and what can we make sense and, and what are the demographics and, and then taking into account the changing in the market. Uh, we've seen a significant change in the market uh, over the last five to six years, if not 10 years, uh, with brick and mortar stores versus internet sales. I don't know about you, but most of my Christmas shopping was done online, and I think that is, is only gonna get more and more because the online shopping only accounts for about 9% right now, and, it, and so the, the need for brick and mortar stores is diminishing significantly, and, and you're seeing a lot of the retailers pull out of the market. That's the background and the history. So Troom comes to me and says, what, what can we do with this site? Because we see no feasibility for retail. It's just not gonna happen. Uh, we see no feasibility for office. They're one of the largest office uh, owners in the valley. Uh, we don't see that is gonna happen. What can we do? Do you think they'd let us do residential? And so we did an analysis of the site and, and uh, thought that uh, that might work. We went to the Red Mountain Ranch Homeowners Association, presented it to the board. Uh, they did not take a formal vote, but we were very well received. We also had a neighborhood meeting and were very well received. We also went door to door and again, very well received. And we thought this is what the community wants. This is what seems to fit in this area. So we'll proceed. And that's how we came forward with the application. So now I'll get started. This site is located at the south west corner of Wrecker and Thomas. For those that are familiar with the site, we are north of the fire station between Thomas Road and the fire station on the west side of uh, Wrecker Road. Uh, it's 30 acres. Um, those that are also familiar with the site understand that Thomas and Wrecker is not a major arterial in the city of Mesa as far as accessibility elsewhere in the community. Uh, Thomas Road dead ends to the west, it dead ends into Lacendas to the east, and it dead ends into Red Mountain to the north. 
It really doesn't go anywhere. Then if you look at Wrecker elsewhere in, in, in the city of Mesa, Wrecker's not your major road. It's not like a Power or a Higley or a Gilbert Road that has a significant amount of activity on it. It, it dead ends at Leisure World uh, to the south. And so Wrecker has never really been a, a major arterial. It's, been, it's broken up and it really doesn't go anywhere. So we're on the very fringe of activity of the market of what's going on. Here's an, you can't really have a PowerPoint presentation without using a drone. So here's a, a picture of a drone footage of the site. For those that can, can kind of picture, we are, where's the, it's not showing up, but you can kind of see we're, we're looking southeast at the site, that vacant land, just kitty corner to those homes. This is a residential area. Everything in this area is residential north of the freeway. You've got the, the homes of Red Mountain Ranch and then on the north side of, of uh, Thomas Road is a city of Mesa Park that the city of Mesa owns and has owned for many, many years, albeit that the park in the very, very center that is labeled light industrial, if you remember that at the study session, that's a, a park. For, I have subsequently found out that that's owned by the Red Mountain Ranch Homeowners Association in there, but the city does own all the, the land around it uh, as well, and I think it's about 130, 40, 50 acres somewhere in there. Uh, what I wanted to do is address different uses in this area as, as we move forward. The current general plan is mixed-use activity district, which is a, a generally a, a retail designation, and so I live in the area, I understand the shopping patterns of what's going on. So the new development uh, of the Sprout Center, Sprout, that's about eight acres. To put that into perspective, our site's th about 30 acres. The new Sprout Center is, is, is eight acres, it's a new development, we're excited, but it's not a big, huge, new shopping center that was developed. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great use and, and we shop at Sprouts and uh, over at, uh, Gilbert and Brown, but it's exciting for the area, but I don't think you've changed the demographic. There's not new. I think you're going to have a lot of cannibalism in the area of, of other grocery store users. You have the shopping center at Power and McDowell. Uh, some of them do very well. If you think about the southwest corner, I don't remember a time when that center was full, and I think it's been around over a decade. Um, if you think about, you know, some of, they've got some of the restaurant pads out on the front, but in the back, uh, I used to go, there was a, a triathlon shop back in there, so I'd go back in there. That's since gone out of business, um, but a lot of that center is, is vacant. And so really to put in more retail, I think is bad planning because you cannibalize on other retail centers that are already struggling. So why would you add more inventory to an already struggling sub-market for the city of Mesa? Power and McKillops, again, has every retail uh, that you can think of with the Target and, and, the, and the Home Depot and, and others, those center, that center's about you know, 17 to 20 acres. Again, put in perspective, we're about 30 acres. And then you have the uh, Walmart shopping center at uh, Greenfield and McKillops. That's about a 30-acre shopping center. So when you compare apples to apples, that's about the size of our site is what fits on with you know, all the retail and the Walmart and the shops that fit on that shopping center. The traffic, we talked a little bit about traffic and so I've, I highlighted and zoomed in the City of Mesa traffic page. And you can see there really is no traffic. And, and as I tell my kids, little known fact, as far as arterial to arterial intersection, I think this is the least traveled arterial arterial intersection in the City of Mesa with only about 6,000 cars a day. By comparison, Power McDell has about 36,000 cars a day. Power McKillops has about 45,000 cars a day. So you can see if you're a retailer or any other type of use that's want visibility, you're not getting it at Wrecker and Thomas where you would get it at other arterial, arterial intersections in the city of Mesa. So we're at an extreme disadvantage. The freeway's been in, the traffic patterns are in, the homes have been built, how people get to and from work or to and from wherever they're going have been established and there's still very, very, very little traffic in this area. The current general plan is, is mixed-use activity district, which is hotels, malls, power centers, uh, entertainment centers, big box development, and employment parks. Planning has, has indicated, you know, they'd like to see maybe, maybe if retail doesn't work, maybe in a, a business park type thing. 
I mean, I guess you could kind of fit it. That's more of the purple on the general plan, but uh, we did look at that, and, and Desert Troon is, does do those type of developments, and they have looked to see if that would work at this intersection. And after owning this property, they don't see any real market for that type of use here. Um, as well as, I don't think that's consistent with what the people up who live up in this area at Red Mountain Ranch uh, would like to see on this property or the vision. After the study session, we went out and, and did an analysis of what's in the area uh, because we have to look at it. And we pulled the uh, Falcon Field Economic Activity Area to analyze what is in the area. Because you have existing buildings that have some vacancy rate, and I think staff gave you a report on that for existing building vacancy rates. But this also brings into account vacant land. Uh, we, our analysis came up with the city of Mesa owns something somewhere upwards of 500 acres in this Falcon Field area um, as you expand it in and, in and around this area. But this is just the Falcon Field area. This isn't the Fiesta District. This isn't Williams Gateway Airport. This isn't downtown. There's a lot of hubs in the city of Mesa where they want to see industrial office development. This is just Falcon Field. And in the city's own study, the top eight sites in the Falcon Field sub area, they've listed. And you can see of the vacancy of about 50% of the land that's still available for development. But of the top eight sites in the Falcon Field activity area, you'll notice we're not even in the top eight. We're not even listed in this analysis where the site we're at. So when we talked about, is this an A site? Is this a B site? Is this a C site? Is this a D site? In the Falcon Field sub area, which is just one of many sub areas in the city of Mesa where they would like to see industrial and office development, class A office, class B office, class C office, we don't even make the top eight locations in our sub area. And so we're really struggling with preserving and holding this site when we can't even make the top eight locations in our own sub area. Uh, so we're, we're the last of the last of the last if anybody wanted to come and develop, assuming that there is uh, demand in the area, which we think it, it's a very limited absorption demand. The, the issue was also brought up, I think, by Falcon Field about safety. Um, we're, we're a little concerned with this because we look at the airport, we're about a mile and a half off the end of the runway. Um, but if you look at the other end of the runway, um, a recent kink, I, I, I can't remember if the Blanford Armistead property has gone through planning commission or not. That's about a mile off the other end of the runway. Yet it wasn't raised as a safety issue there. The Val Vista McKellops Nesbitt property that I'm working on, where we tried to do something that wasn't non-residential, and we were excoriated for that um, by the, the neighbors and have, have since corrected our path and repented of those previous sins. And we are moving forward with the residential development. But we're further from the one runway from all these residential projects, you can probably look through those and you probably know many people who live in those subdivisions that are closer off the end of the runway than we are. We're, we're far away, we don't think that a safety is a, is a big issue. As staff indicated, um, I don't know that the design or, or the layout, I think staff was happy, we don't have many comments, we agree with, with staff's comments on this. We think this is a great project. This is a gated community with lots that are the same size as what you see out there today with Red Mountain Ranch, both on the northeast and the southeast corner. Ours will be gated, we'll have private streets, we'll have plenty of buffers around the site. Leslie has done an excellent job of working with us. So we think we really don't have issues associated with the layout, and so if the land use issue goes in, in, in the direction of allowing a single family residential project, we're not sure that there's any issues with staff as far as the layout and the design of the project. So we would concur with staff on that. Um, and last but not least, I think we gave you a map of, of a list of 200 people that, uh, a map as well as the letters that were in your packet of, of people that we visited and spoke to in the area. That happened in two weekends, four days where we knocked on doors and were able to obtain 200 people to sign letters in support of our application. We stopped. We could have gotten 1,000. And if, if the city wants us to go out a couple more weekends and get more signatures and get more people involved, we're happy to do that. 
But as you can see, we contacted the people that were directly adjacent to the site, those that are most impacted by whatever develops on this site. And you can see from the dots, the green dots, overwhelming support um, of, of what we would like to see. Uh, we don't see any opposition to residential. Um, we think this is a, a residential area and it would fit into the character of what currently exists in the park to the north. And so we think this is a, uh, something that is worth your, your, uh, your consideration and, and worth your support. And so with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Lake. Are there any questions for the applicant, board members? Not right now. <clears throat> okay, thank you. We're gonna turn some time over to the what, public, but I'm... Can I, Mike, can I... Oh, yes, Tim, go right ahead. The, these lots, the size that you're recommending, are those comparable to the ones that are on the other sides of Wrecker and Thomas? I, I, this Cor is like, correct. They'll just kind of fit in with all the other ones that are there. Uh, uh, Chairman and Board Member Boyle, yes. On the, I believe on the north side, I think those lots are 55 by 110s. And on the south side, they're 50 by 115s. And we're 50 by 115s. Okay. So very comparable. We may be a little deeper than the north side, but very comparable. Tim, is that it? Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lake. We'll, we'll give you a chance to address some of the issues that have come up shortly. So thank this you. time... So you know we have one, two, three, let's see, one, two, two, four, six individuals with, with wishing to speak, I believe. Um, they have been identified for a variety of the three cases that, are, that we're talking about, but I'm just going to call them and we'll listen to all comments uh, in, any, in no particular order. So let us begin. Um, and I might say, as you come podium to speak, um, as you have heard, we will ask and we do ask that you give us your name and where you reside. And it might be helpful whether you want to state whether you're in support of the, the project or not. But we, I also ask that you leave, leave your, limit your comments to three minutes. If you wish to have somebody speak for you uh, and would like to, to give them those minutes, that would be just fine too. Just let us know as, as your name is called. That being said, let us begin. We'll first hear from John Groves. If you'll come forward. Thank you. I am in favor of the project. I do not wish to speak. Thank you for... We're off to a good start, aren't we? Well, I guess... You have that option. It, it's okay. It's Actually, as I'm looking at this... Many of you wish, do not wish to speak. Okay. Um, moving on to card number two, H. Louise Zyman, if I've got that correct. I am in favor of the project. I do not wish to speak. Correct? Okay. Well, this may go faster than what we had anticipated. Let's see. Um, next card is Catherine Heslatcher. If I get that close enough? Okay, I am opposed to this item and I do wish to speak. That being said, come forward, please. Mr. Chairman and everybody else, I have to pull this down because you might not see me. <laughs> and I'd like you to hear me. I have been a resident of- Could you give us your name and address? Oh, I'm sorry. Catherine Hoslocker, 6018 East Viewmont Drive, Mesa. 85215. Uh, when we bought our property 18 years ago, we were just so pleased at the surrounding areas and everything seemed to fit in well. Uh, we liked the traffic area. And I have noticed that with this new um, sprouts that came in. I've already been uh, been aware of the traffic causing problems. Uh, people stop in the middle of the street because they want to make a left turn, but the, the left turn lane is there, and oh, all of a sudden, I have to wait for everybody else to go, and meanwhile, people behind them have to stop. 
Now this is just one store. You're going to put in other stores or other homes and the uh, traffic will definitely increase. Uh, I have been very lucky in hitting seven lights in a row with red lights. Doesn't please me. Sometimes I can get through and, and without too much trouble. But you keep talking about this park. That park was dedicated years and years ago. Nothing has happened. In fact, now the park sign is down. Why? I don't know. Uh, we are a nice, quiet neighborhood. We have very little crime. And we'd like to keep it that way. We don't want to see commercial, and we really don't want to see homes unless they're very big homes and very big lots. Um, and that's what I feel. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next, I have uh, Marilyn Husted. Husted? And, and I was just going to say you're in favor of the project, but you do not wish to speak. Okay. Betty Day, I am opposed to this item, and I wish to speak if you'd like to come forward. I figure if that microphone will suit her, it'll suit me as well. My name is Betty Day, and I live at 6107 East Roland Street. And I, like Katie Haslack, her feel. Uh, we bought our home 17 years ago, and I bought it because it was a nice, quiet area, nice desert vistas. I like to see a sunset. I like to see city lights at night. And I'll be honest with you, I have been one of the ones that have fought some of the businesses that tried to go in there as well. For this reason, that's why we bought, uh, because I like the quiet and I didn't want the congestion, and I didn't want the big lights of a big building, and I didn't want the signage of a big building. I didn't want the traffic of a big building. To be honest with you, I like it nice and quiet there, and that is why we bought. Um, so I'm kind of caught in the middle, because they did send someone around to uh, sign a petition as to whether you wanted to have residential or mixed use, I believe is what it is now. Uh, they did not come to my home. They did go to my neighbors. and. I think it bothered me more that they said you had two choices. One was residential, the other was mixed use. They didn't give you a third choice and say, or it can be what it is and you can continue fighting. That's what I wanna do. And so ultimately, I know it's going to become something, but to be honest with you, I'm gonna fight it as long as I can. And I realize that you know, it could be homes, and they put it, I think it's the way they put it, um, big box stores. They didn't say it could be a call center, you know, single story call center where the people come in the morning and they leave at night. Uh, if it's a business, you know, I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with the residential either if it's a, you know, a nice sized residential place and the houses aren't crammed together. I live off of Wrecker Road and, I mean, off of, yeah, off of Wrecker and Olympic on Roland. So my house does not border that edge of Wrecker. Now, there may be someone here who, whose home does, but I'll be honest with you, if I had bought there and paid a premium for a two-story home, I would not want for it to look down on to a commercial building or another residential house. I really like the sunsets, not just that, I'm an Arizona native, and I see my land, personally, American Indian, uh, going constantly. That is why I bought in that small area, because I didn't want it growing out. I didn't figure it would. They said it was going to stay in its natural state. Um, I know there have been people that have said, well, it's, it's not really in its natural state. There are bricks and, and wood and building materials all underneath there. And that's true, there are. But you have to go out in there to hike to see that. It doesn't block my view of a sunset. And it doesn't bother the little animals that are there. We are lucky enough to be able to have Havelina, a pack of 16. Um, we have burrowing owls down there, and I believe they are an endangered spe species. So I know that whoever builds there is gonna have to relocate them. Um, I am 
native. I like native land. I like it the way it is. We have owls. We have javelina. We have bobcats. We have coyotes. You know, I, you all probably have children, and you have to take them to the zoo to see that. You have to take them, show them in a book the animal. We don't. We have them there. And while there are animals and there are children there, I keep a close eye on my three chihuahuas. And if I had children and grandchildren, I would do the same thing. There are predators there. And you don't move there and not realize that there are not predators there. So that's my own opinion. And I know it's going to have to come down to one or the other. But if you'll excuse my language, damn it. I'm going to fight it as long as I can. And whatever is going to be is going to be. I know there are people that think just the opposite of me. But I've been there for 17 years and fighting for 17 years. The Cubs, the movie theaters, uh, the squawk boxes for a quick you know, drive through restaurant. Um, people didn't want that either. And neither do I. So I thank you for your patience and listening to me complain. But uh, as a homeowner there, I live there. I don't live down the street a couple of miles down. I live there. And it's a nice, quiet area. We love that. Um, and I think it's the newer people that have just moved in that do not realize the history of that neighborhood and what has been going on and how hard we've fought to keep it in its state. I thank you. Thank you. We do appreciate your opinion. Thank you for sharing it. The last card I have is for um, Stephen Wiseman. I am in favor of the item, and I do not wish to speak. And that's what I have. That being said, Mr. Lake, would you like to come forward and address anything you think you would like to address that you heard? Chairman, commission members, I hope you can appreciate the situation the property owner has been in for 12 years. Um, no matter what they propose, there's people that want to just see it remain vacant. Um, and if it has to be something, they want it to be the least intense that they possibly can have it. Um, I agree. No matter what we bring in, some, something's always going to be opposed, or people are going to oppose it. And, and quite honestly, if we tried to bring in an, an apartment project here or an industrial garden office or a roll-up office or a, or a call center, or, uh, you know, the list goes on. Anything more intense than what we're proposing, I think we would have a room full of people wearing T-shirts. And we've all been at those type of meetings. But the reason we chose what we chose is because it's something that people could look, feel, and touch and say, okay, it already exists on the northeast corner. It already exists on the southeast corner. We're going to do something like that, although newer, with nicer elevations in a newer design, with, with all the, the things that we've improved upon in Mesa over the years, with a gated community, it will be a nice development. And so that's why we chose that, because we felt that was the path that would be most consistent with a, a very active area. And so that's why we're here today with a proposal before you. Thank you. OK, thank you. Hold on just a second. OK, board members, at this point, it's time to ask our questions. Go ahead, Chair. Sure. I just have one question. and. Um, Mr. Lake, you indicated that you had 200 signatures. Did they give that to you guys? I'm, I never saw that. My, maybe it's in our packet. Is it in our packet and I missed it? Thank you. Okay, and, thank you. And that's the map up there of, okay. of where those people were. Which one? Okay. Okay. Leslie, did I see your hand go up? Did you want to respond or John? The chair and board members, if you don't mind, would like to give just a little bit of a staff follow-up also. I would be happy to do that. Would you like to do it now before it's, we... Whichever order that you would prefer. You know, it doesn't matter to us. If you would like to go ahead and respond now, this would be a good time. Sure. Uh, I've got a couple of things, and then if it's okay with you, uh, Corinne Nystrom from the from Falcon Field would like to make a comment or two, and Mr. Dejiniak from Economic Development to uh, supplement some of the things that we've talked from a staff perspective. Just like, just sure. like have a seat, and we'll just well, see. And I'll reserve, reserve rebuttal time for that. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Uh, just to, to start with, again, uh, as we've looked at the general plan, the primary designation on the property has been the mixed-use activity district, but a portion of the property is the employment. And as you know, with our general plan, it's got fuzzy edges on it and for a purpose, uh, so things can fluctuate with the market. And the, certainly the real intent here in perspective of the staff has been the employment-type uses as opposed to the retail commercial activities. We agree this isn't a great place for that on this north end of the property. 
the area doesn't have a lot of traffic because there's not much development there. Development would come, there'd be more traffic. And so one kind of follows the other. When you look at the freeway system, there are 40 to 50,000 trips a day uh, on the freeway right next door. So there is a lot of traffic going by, people going to, uh, to and from other major employment areas, to and from other shopping areas and uh, residential areas. So there are a lot of people in the area that could continue to use the site and would use the site uh, if the development comes. Mr. Lakes talked about the current property owner purchasing the property 12 years ago. 12 years ago was 2006, just before the big downturn and just before the freeway was finished. And so we've been through that cycle now. The economy is coming back now finally. It is moving this way. And so it, it in my opinion, has uh, had enough time with that recovery for it to, to hit this piece of property. And I think it, it will come here and it won't be that much longer before that would happen because we see a lot of activity going on in this particular area. So uh, with those uh, comments, again, I'll turn it over. I think Ms. Nystrom has something to say and then Mr. Gentiniak. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board. My name is Corrine Nystrom. I'm the airport director at Falcon Field Airport which is located in the general vicinity, um, the nucleus of the Falcon Field District. There were just a couple of things I wanted to clarify uh, based upon some comments that Mr. Lake um, made in regard to um, the proposal. Uh, first of all, he did mention the fact that there isn't a lot of automobile traffic in that area right now, but what he failed to mention is the fact that at Falcon Field Airport, we have over 300,000 aircraft operations a year, and the majority of those aircraft will be flying over the proposed development. That's going to result in a large number of noise complaints coming in from the city. I believe we provided in our documentation um, a map showing where the noise complaints have been coming from that part of the area. And you will see that there are a sizable number of noise complaints coming in from the Red Mountain District, which is located very, very close by. So I just want to say that, yes, I, I, I can't contest or agree with the automobile traffic, but I can tell you, because we do log it, that there are going to be a sizable number of aircraft operations, over 300,000 a year over that area. The second item is um, in regard to the position that, well, the airport really did not take a position on the residential properties that he mentioned that are located to the southwest that are indeed closer to the airport than the proposed development. And the reason why the airport did not necessarily take a position on those is because those properties were already zoned as residential. And so if it shows residential in the general plan, then um, it's not in the airport's best interest to, to say, well, let's not go along with what the general plan is. In this particular case, we're, that's a whole different situation because there is potential in the future for commercial development to go in there. And um, so as, as the airport, obviously when you have aircraft flying over a piece of real estate, ideally you would prefer to have it flying over commercial property rather than a large number of individual residents. So I appreciate the opportunity to respond and appreciate um, your consideration. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Quick, yes. quick question, Chair, if you don't mind. Yes. Um, just regarding safety, you didn't really note safety. Is 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 that not uh, officially a concern considering the location? Or? Well, anytime you have aircraft flying over a a location where they are either departing from the airport or landing at the airport. That is when safety is the biggest factor. I mean, FAA statistics clearly show that the majority of um, aircraft incidents occur shortly after takeoff or just prior to arrival. And um, the statistics indicate, even for Falcon Field, that that, that could happen. Now, um, as far as that particular piece of real estate, because there are so many aircraft operations at Falcon Field, the air traffic control tower has to have a minimum separation between aircraft. 
in order to ensure safety that the aircraft don't have a mid-air. So when there are a large number of aircraft operations going on, they have to spread those ops out, which means that aircraft, especially if they're coming in for arrival on runway um, two two left or two two right, that they're gonna be pushing those ops out over this proposed development area in order to main se maintain separation between the aircraft. If any of those aircraft have some type of an emergency, you know, there's always the chance that, you know, if you're coming in for, for a landing in particular or if you're departing, uh, there's always a chance that that, that could um, be a, a unfortuitous situation where they would not be able to make it back to the airport. And we've seen that happen. Thank you. Are there any? Yes, Jessica. Um, you mentioned, I mean, obviously with any airport you get noise complaints. Um, and you mentioned that there would be an in, a likely increase in noise complaints. What happens when you log those and how, what's the impact? Do you guys try to go back and forth? Is there any after effects that when, you know, what happens when you get noise complaints? Do you just log them and say no. that's it? No, I mean, yes, happens? we log them. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Yes, we log every one of those noise complaints and Especially, uh, we do provide educational material for the for everyone. Um, there's an immediate response um, to the parties, especially if they file their complaint online. Um, if they call us um, and they can provide us specific information and contact information, we follow up with every single one of those noise complaints to try to find out when it occurred. What information can they give us? Can they identify or at least give us a description of that aircraft? And then we try to research to find out, okay, what was happening do, during that time? Who was flying in that area? And if we're able to identify who it may have been, then we have a conversation with the party that was, was probably or more than likely was the party that was causing the noise. And so, yes, we do follow up on every one of them that we possibly can. No matter how often somebody files a complaint, we take every one of them seriously. I guess my, my question is how, how does that impact the airport's future operations or current operations? Or, I mean, I understand you log them and you, you try to resolve the right. issue, but how? How does that noise complaint, do they impact anything going on with future operations, the future airport? Like, what is the, what does that impact due to the yes. airport? Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, potentially yes. And I will give you the, the prime example right now that we're dealing with, and that is in the Santa Monica, California airport. The number of noise complaints and concerns that were expressed by that community over several years has now resulted in plans to close that airport. Because? Because of all of the complaints of the complaints. community. And so Santa Monica Airport, I, I believe it's in the mid 2020s, that airport will be no more. What, it will be what, shut down. For comparison, what is the comparison of takeoffs and landings and operations compared to Williams or Falcon? I, I don't know exactly what Santa Monica's ops are, but I'm pretty sure that we actually have more aircraft craft operations than Santa Monica. Falcon Field is the fifth, at least in 2017, we were the fifth busiest general aviation airport. 300,000 aircraft operations accounts for more operations than a large number of aircraft operations in large cities across the United States. And a lot of that is because of the, fl the flight training that occurs at Falcon Field and at mm -hmm. every other airport here in the Valley. So we're right up there. We're actually, I believe we're um, last year or in 2016, I believe we were the 38th busiest airport in the United States. And then I have a follow up for staff where you also, you made a comment that um, about the general plan about why you did not take action on the other ones mm -hmm. because the other ones had residential on the general plan. Right. Um, that general plan was just updated a few years ago. Um, at that time, it could have been advantageous for the airport to try to 
redesignate some of those because they're not a zoning, it's a policy. I was wondering why some of those areas around the other side of the airport weren't grabbed and converted over to more office industrial sure. spaces. Uh, uh, Chair, board member Sarkisian, those were already zoned and developed largely. There are a few small lots here and there that you've seen recently that okay. they were already zoned. We might have added a PAD onto the end of them, gotcha. but they've been zoned for many years. Okay. All right, thank you, Justin. Any other co comments? Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board. My name is Bill Jebjeniak. I'm the Economic Development Director for the city. I've been here for uh, just over 10 years. 10 years and three and a half months, Shelley. Um, the, the funny part about all of this is the, for the first time in our uh, career here, the economy is finally with us. For those first 10 years, I remember the first budget we were going into, we uh, cut 40%. We're now out of that. There's demand in the marketplace. And one of the things that in looking at Mesa, I think we stood back and said, where would you put office and industrial development around the city? Well, it's usually along a highway belt, which is where offices want to be seen. They want their name on a building. You know, another part of the city, I've got a million square feet being proposed. The point to that is there's demand, and I have some numbers here I'm going to share with you in just a second. For this particular parcel, uh, it has sat vacant for a lot of years, and I can understand why the young lady would like to continue to enjoy her view. The challenge is we are growing, we're um, probably exceeding 500,000 people today. You will officially become the 35th largest city in the country probably next year, if not later this year. The challenge now is how do you make, we, we basically have, um, one job, well, another way to put this, uh, we have three residents for every job. I'd like to reverse that trend and have more employment here. And this would be one of the sites we would look for that. I'm not sure it is a strong retail site, but there's a lot of momentum, I will tell you, from the Sprouts opening. And having been there at 10 minutes to seven uh, a week ago on a Wednesday morning and watching the people wrap the building, going, I don't think there's gonna be any cannibalization. I think just a strong market demand is what that is. And that's a retail user. I will tell you, there are several others that are there looking at that very location. You've seen and talked to some of them as staff. We have different types of uses. We have inquiries on the north side on this particular piece and the piece adjacent to it. One particular developer got told, I'm sorry, it's tied up with a housing developer. I'm not saying it's this particular piece, but it's not the first time you're gonna see this issue. So let me just get into the office demand here for a little bit, and I'm gonna cite six different projects that are active in, in the uh, marketplace. So currently, and I will submit this for your record for your own use, this comes for Greater Phoenix Economic Council. It is through December. Number of prospects, and I'll start with office. There are 67 office prospects active in the marketplace today. That's up from 60 a year ago. Let's focus on just two sides of that. Over 100,000 square feet, there are 14 leads. In the city of Mesa, and we have an this goes to council on a quarterly basis. This is the number of prospects, or number of opportunities that we have for Class A office in Mesa today. Over 100,000 square feet, zero. Over 200,000 square feet, zero. The market demand is not for small square footages today. I often get asked by my neighbors and others, elected officials, how can we can't have a state farm like it's in Tempe or others like that? I'm not saying this site is ideal for state farm. Please don't misrepresent that. However, you don't have the product available in the marketplace. Hence, demand today is for 50,000 square feet and above per floor. So when you look at a three-story office building, there's 150,000 square feet. We can sell that. Let's look at industrial for just a second. There are 71 active industrial projects a year to date in the greater Phoenix area, up from 58. You know how many industrial projects we have in Mesa that are over 100,000 square feet? And let me, back, let me back up. Did I tell you that the industrial prospects 
from over 100,000 square feet, there are 39 active in the marketplace. We have three, period. So for me, I'm looking at employment opportunities around a marketplace, around a, an exit like this, sort of makes sense. Do I see the biggest and heaviest and in, in intense use? No. Is it something compatible with Northeast Mesa? Yes. Several years ago, the elected officials asked us to study the, not just Falcon Field, but the greater Falcon Field area and develop a strategy. And then I believe it was um, Mayor Finter for his nine months that he was in office, really stepped in and we really looked hard at how do you diversify the economy so you don't depend on just aerospace. The average pilot's getting older. You need to start looking at some different alternatives. Today, one of those you just recently approved, the Falcon Tech Center. So today, I will tell you, we're working with a 400,000 square foot user for that site, fresh off the presses. So let me get into those six items or six projects that are currently underway, because I think uh, I wasn't here, and um, I, I, you know, I always worry when I have an attorney might try to answer the question for us on what the demand and what's going on. But I'll certainly start with, um, at the corner of Greenfield and Virginia, there is a site that uh, was approved. It permits have not been pulled, but they have been approved. Mr. Scott Jackson is your developer. He just lost a 90,000 square foot tenant. Hence, he won't put a shovel in the ground. I believe staff just renewed that permit. Extended it, let me clarify it. Second one, on Greenfield, just down between McDowell and Virginia. There's 100,000 square feet uh, under construction today. Um, um, East Group, I believe, is the developer, building 100,000 square feet of spec. 80% of our leads today are still looking for existing space. They don't want to take the time to wait for build the suit. The third one is the Falcon Tech Center. I already mentioned that uh, interest, and we're barely getting out of FAA sign-offs and uh, environmental sign-offs and everything else, and we already have a user. We don't even have a developer in hand yet, but we have a user. Not a bad way to approach it. Third, so um, the... Boeing folks just referred to the building immediately to their east as the tower to the east. If you haven't seen, I understand Mr. Lake referred to the Opus development, which is 150,000 square feet. Thank you for being that large. It's 34 feet of clear height inside. That's what I'm looking for. No, there's not a tenant in hand today, but I can tell you he's getting a lot of looks. So is the East Group over on Greenfield. You're finally getting inventory. Third one. I'm sorry, the fifth one, uh, Higley, south of McKellips, right next to Wire Masters. I believe uh, that's been in a series of uh, three buildings, uh, totaling about 125,000 square feet. Uh, Moshi, and I don't recall his uh, last name, is the developer. Again, getting inventory we don't seem to have. The last one, let's talk a little bit about um, what's going on at in and around Longbow, Longbow Parkway, Wrecker, you know, there's been a lot of pressure around residential development. Council's pushed back. I don't recall whether this board's been asked to push back. But I can tell you today, there are three other um, non-residential users in that immediate area that are looking to build. So for us, we're finally seeing the activity that the economy never allowed us to have. And finally, with the economy with us, I hate to see a piece that is on top of a highway with a high traffic count. He's right. Thomas and Wrecker doesn't have a high traffic count. John, you said it well. It shouldn't today. It's peaceful. However, when you have development, traffic's going to pick up, including with residential. Traffic will pick up significantly. So when I look at this, I think your commercial development needs to be along the exits. You know, if you want to propose a residential development in the middle of a block, I get it. But that is some of the demands that are out there today and something I wanted to make sure the planning board was aware of. With that, I'll close and see if there's any questions. Okay. Thank you. Any questions, board members? Yes. I have a question. They keep, um, they keep bringing up the project that's existing and titled to the west that's commercial or something like that. It's a PAD, but then there was a the thought about, you know, 
if we entitle this residential, then is the next piece gonna be residential? So for that piece, that's an existing commercial zone or what is that currently? And, and why are we not seeing any activity on that one either? Uh, Mr. Chair, Board Member Sarkisian, the property to the west is zoned LI. Um, okay. There is a conceptual site plan approved there okay. that has employment type buildings on it with a hotel. Um, it would have to come in for future site plan review Revision. and some type of, you know, some details. But okay. at this point, it's just conceptual. Okay. Is there, a, is there an S on that one to, for the LI? Was there a square footage on that one that meets any of these? That, I was just, if it was comparable, if, if this area is, is providing that kind of I don't have the numbers footprint availability in the, or. In the packet, I had this conceptual site plan on page, um, nine. page nine included that site plan. Um, so you can, it doesn't have square footages on it there, but you can see a general idea of the layout of the conceptual plan with kind of a center core of buildings with a bunch along um, Thomas and hotels on either side. Okay. Jessica, is anything else? Are you good? Okay, Shelley. I have a couple questions. So in your opinion, and I'm gonna ask Sean this exact same thing, is this site um, viable for Class A office space, 100 to 200,000 square feet? Yes. Is that it? <clears throat> Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to, well, I, I feel yes, I did you have another one? Just go right ahead. Um, just in thinking with the neighbor's comments, would you be able, I mean, what's the likelihood or time frame of a, like a one-story class A or a one, like a, a one, something that would be more in tune with the neighborhood sure. that's not going to be a blocking a view monster. signage, all these monstrous, you know, kind of stuff right. like that. What's, what's that likelihood of that space being able, you know, to fit or fill something um, that's not going to have, it's a one-story obviously then will not have visibility from the freeway. So I think it's all about access. Um, you've actually got a, a lot of infrastructure already in. It's ease of access to the 202. We have actually started to brand the area. You've seen signage. You'll start to see monument signs here this spring uh, to really start to change the area. That, one of the other things we've been telling um, the um, end users about how easy it is to get back to the 101, 101 and 202 interchange. It's a 10 to 12 minute ride, unless you're at peak times. So for us, that gets you back to a large workforce. I do see it being not a three-story building at that location. Uh, I do see it somewhat smaller. Uh, I do see um, you will be able to actually see a building when you put something there on this particular corner from a highway going um, eastbound. You will not see it going westbound. So you need to think about how that works for the end user along the way. But I'll give you even a tougher spot. I want you to go to uh, Alma School and um, Bass Pro Drive. There sat during, the, it, I remember day three or four on the, we went to the groundbreaking in the first building. Hey, this is great, breaking ground on buildings already. It died in the recession. It has since been rejuvenated. It is now Waypoint. I will tell you they, um, have bought all the buildings, they built another 100,000 square feet, immediately occupied with uh, advanced traffic solutions, and then they built 150,000 square feet on three floors over on the West B western side of the property. Tucked back in, don't have any visibility really, it's a great looking building, it's all spoken for. All three are, all three floors are leased, there was a 50,000 square foot user took one floor and 100 on the other. They're doing tenant improvements and occupancy will be, I believe, May for one and June for the other. That's the demand. It's coming this way. I'm trying to stay along a highway loop. There's a qualified workforce, very educated in the northeast part of the city. I'm trying to take advantage of keeping some of those people in Mesa for their jobs. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, Mr. Lake, if you'd like to come forward and respond. 
with a rebuttal, that'd be great this time. And we'll continue on with our questions, discussion. If I could have them flip back to the Falcon Field Economic Activity Area. Maybe I need to go here. There we go. Copy of this for your record, sir. What is that? What I just gave to the planning board. Oh, thank Put you. Put your glasses on, you can see what's going on. I can't see it right now. I'll look at it later. <laughs> Through a magnifying glass. <clears throat> Chairman, board members, I appreciate the opportunity again to address you. Uh, let me just touch on a couple of things. First with the airport, safety is safety, whether you're on the north end of the runway or the south end of the runway. I think the difference is the south of the run runway is a Citrus Area Homeowners Association that is very active and has been very active in what is the general plan designated. Um, and so that's why that's designated the way it is. There are vacant parcels in that area. The Armistead project you just saw, the Val Vista McKillops project that I've just brought forward. And so to say it's all developed out, I think is, 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 is not entirely true. Um, but there could be corners there that would be very useful to be office, but they're not going to be because the homeowners got involved. And in this area, if, if, if the Red Mountain Ranch needs to get more cohesive and get involved in the process, maybe they need to. Um, as far as, Demand in this area. Um, Ms. Allen, is, is this site suitable for Class A office? I would tell you no. There isn't a Class A office built in this whole sub area. A Class A office at this location. Desert Troon has a lot of Class A offices. As you've seen from, if I could switch up to my It, there we go, we've got technical difficulties. I knew that was gonna happen. That's what we'd like to have there. <laughs> <laughs> Would that work, ladies? <laughs> hey, while we've got this technical difficulty, can we figure out what the beeping is before, as tedious as this meeting already is, Beeping isn't adding anything to it. Yeah, it's in a door. Yeah, it's in. It's very annoying. Okay, then you just it's F a five. Yeah, it's <coughs> distracting. <coughs> Let's talk a little bit about Class A office, because I think my client knows a lot about Class A office. Uh, in this Falcon Field sub area, as I identified, we're not even on the top eight sites for the, 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 own, the city's own plan that talks about areas where they'd like to see it. You have, just to, off the top of my head, you have the area south of Falcon Field, which is an industrial park that has struggled for years and years and years. Uh, you have, as you go through that whole region, you have industrial and office developments that have struggled with filling up. Um, you've got, you know, Longbow you've, that struggled. You've got the city of Mesa Citrus Orchard site on the north and south side of McKillops that they would like to see office. And I think two years ago, they proposed to do a biomedical office building there. And, and so that would be coming online. Falcon Field Suites, the Mesa Commerce Park, the Commons. Mesa International Business Center, the Dover Industrial Park, Falcon Industrial Park 1 and 2, all better sites. And that's just within the Falcon Field sub area. So if you're coming to the city of Mesa and want to build a Class A office, are you going to go to this area or are, you, or are we going to go down to Riverview where they do have some nice offices in Riverview? Or are you going to go down to the Elliott Road corridor where Apple is, where the city of Mesa has spent great a deal, deal of money installing fiber in that area and build a Class A office at, at a freeway interchange that has significantly more traffic and, and visibility than this site. Or are you going to go to downtown, where Mesa has spent decades and decades trying to encourage office in their downtown core? Or are you going to go to the Fiesta District? Everybody wants to see the Fiesta District redeveloped. Is that a better area? 
adjacent to the freeway there. I guess my point is, everybody wants every site to develop as a Class A office. But at some point, a property owner has to look at their site and say, I'm not the Class A, I'm not the, the A site, I'm not the B site, I'm not the C site. And quite honestly, I talked to a lot of brokers since the study session, I said, and in the study session, I referred to the site as a D site. And he said, quite honestly, Sean, you're not the D site either. He said, you're the beyond that, you're, you're after that. When we talk about traffic, oh, this area, when it develops out, will have more traffic. Well, this area is developed. Everything on the east side of Wrecker is developed. There will be no more homes, there will be no more people developed in that area. The city of Mesa owns the north side of Thomas. So if anything else is gonna develop in that, the city has control of that. And quite frankly, if they have a, a user come in that wants to build a million square foot office, class A office, they already own the property. They control what can happen there. South of here, you've got Dr. Engel's property that is adjacent to the freeway. We're not even adjacent to the freeway. And so I'm just naming a couple of sites, not to mention Longbow, where we want all of this to happen, which has adjacent to see to the freeway. So at some point, I have to face reality with this site. It would be nice to have a three-story office or an industrial roll-up building or, or garden office. I think garden office was brought up um, about that. We are all familiar with the garden offices that were developed at Power and McCallops, Power and McDowell, and they still struggle. And those are on little five and six acre pieces, not 30 acres or, or adding the Ingalls 40 acres or the hundreds of acres south of that in Longbow little garden offices, they struggle on little five acre pieces on Power Road, which has significantly more traffic. So I think that's not a fair analysis. And quite honestly, the, the, the king of garden offices lives in the city of Mesa, and he doesn't develop those anymore. Uh, Mr. Willett, that many of you are familiar with, he doesn't develop those because they, they just don't do them anymore. If that, was, if that made sense in this economy, which has come back for quite a few years, let's not we're not at the beginning of a growing economy. I would like to say we're at the top and we're gonna continue rising, but we've been going strong for a lot of years. Um, and then one more analogy, if, if, you'll, if you'll just bear with me. This area has, has tried. If you can think on Thomas Road west of this site, there's an industrial subdivision that was put in, I'm guessing 15 plus years ago, Mr. Passy was involved in that. I taught my 24-year-old daughter how to drive when she was 15 because the streets were empty and nothing was developed. And in that subdivision now we have a church and a, after all these years of them trying to market that little industrial subdivision, now we have one more building go up. So to say, hey, we've got some activity in the area given what's going on and all the vacant land in and around this area, I think, I think is, is, it's gonna take a long time for that to bleed up maybe my grandchildren's grandchildren to bleed up into Wrecker and Thomas. And so we, we think this is a reasonable land use. We think this is a good site. It's consistent and late, least intense use we can think of that's compatible with the neighborhood. And so we'd recommend and ask for your support. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Lake, if you would just stay there for a second. Um, and before I turn it over for discussion, staff, do we have a rebuttal to the rebuttal? Okay, we'll wait for some questions. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, who would like to begin? I know there are a number of opinions on this on this board, so let's start talking. Jennifer, go right ahead. I'm familiar with the areas that we um, have been looking at. I was a resident of Red Mountain Ranch for a long time. I lived on the end of Record Road. I also had a um, Class A office space and the Mesa Commerce Center, which is at the entrance of Falcon Field, from 1998 to 2013. I had vacant land to the west, to the east, and to the south. So I'm familiar with what it is to be a property owner, commercially and residentially in that area. I'm also familiar with the pushback that occurred many years ago of other industrial, a retail coming into the Red Mountain area and was very aware of that, and that was during the time I lived there. Ideally, 
I understand the, the general plan. I understand as a business owner. And I understand as looking at the city's economic development that it, it is important to have employment. But however, I don't feel this is the space for it. I don't think there is enough density of employment that could occur that would be agreeable to the residents. If you had a high impact there, that I don't think it would ever occur. The residents would not want that. And I understand the area is residentially, and I don't think it is conducive to the area. I see the area south of the 202 being better suited. Um, I agree the demand is up. Um, I can think of plenty of other areas that we have vacant land. Um, I appreciate the efforts and opinions of the, cit the city and the staff. They're an excellent board, but I have to say that I am um, in agreement to rezone this. Um, ultimately, you know, our city is for the people that live here, and we have to listen to them and take that into consideration. This is not a new opinion for this area. It'll continue to be strong, as you had pointed out. Um, Betty, mm, I forgot your last name, excuse me. Dave. 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 And so I think ultimately when it comes down to it, as difficult as the decision is, as much as I want to see a Mesa prosper, which it is and will, that this is not the place for employment. I think this is a place that would do better residential. Um, I don't think it's having enough economic impact to increase the prosperity of Mesa in any big way. Thank you, Jennifer. Appreciate that. Next. You, you ready? Sure. Um, you know, I took, I live up in this area currently right now, and I, my kids go to school up in this area, and I actually drove this site the other, um, yesterday, and um, driving on Thomas, um, having West on Thomas from Wrecker, it's, it's a ghost town. There's no, I mean, I think I saw two cars, and I was one of them. Um, <laughs> There's nothing, nothing there, which, which is nice. Um, but I mean, I, I understand, like she mentioned the general plan and what everything that's been taken into account. I, I reached out to some, um, I have you know, a neighbor that's a pilot. I have a friend that works for the FAA and they, they all just felt that it was not a safety issue. It was a noise complaint issue. Um, and they obviously hate dealing with those, but it is what it is when you're near an airport and there's no way to get around that. In my neighborhood, um, we get complaints, I hear from the neighbors that they hate the airport, but they're actually not referring to this airport, they're referring to Sky Harbor Airport. Um, and I don't, I think, I mean, as far out as you wanna go, you're gonna get complaints. Um, I don't think that having, I mean, I, I fully support Falcon Field and their efforts to grow and do in business and commerce and industrial. I tell people all day long, I'm so excited about that area, I can't wait to check out the news buildings and offices, and hopefully one day I can convince my boss to move an office when we can expand in there. Um, but when you see a, a good, successful business development or community office, class A, you know, they're clustered. They're not spread out. They're clustered. They support each other. They have restaurants. They have support um, businesses around there. Everything is very close together. Um, I don't see one being this far out helping in, in increasing that. Um, when you look at the maps, the main industrial areas, the ones that are existing that go into the bottom of the base, the river and stuff, I mean, that's Higley and Greenfield. Those are the connections. You're gonna use those as a business owner or industrial owner to get to your locations, Higley and Greenfield. You're not going on record. Um, the increased traffic that's occurring because of the sprouts is because people are going, instead of on power to the supermarkets, they're going on to sprouts. It's people coming south. Nobody, they're not coming north across the freeway to get there they're stopping at Sprouts and then they're going back south or they're heading on the freeway. I don't think the visibility is helping. I, I just, I don't see this, the airport factor as far as safety being a problem. I think that the city has, has an, uh, a lot of more land surrounding the airport that can change over or just be more uh, planned out for intensity. Um, but this, this spot, I don't see it as, as I said, the safety issue. And for economic development, I don't see 
that either. I mean, you got Thomas Road there, which is two miles of an arterial. That's it, stops in both directions. Wrecker Road stops at Thomas, does not go north, and does not go south to the 60. I mean, this, this, is, this is the reason why I previously agreed to the signage going on for the Sprouts, because there's no visibility. There's no, no one who would go there unless they saw a sign. And I don't believe that putting a couple offices or an industrial building that is going to be compatible to the level that the neighbors are going to want is going to draw anybody north there either. So for that, um, I think um, this is the best use for the site. Thank you, Jess. Comments, Shelley. You ready? Yeah, I think I'm ready to jump in. I I kind of voiced a lot of my opinions at the study session, but that wasn't for the general public to hear. A lot of the things that I feel have already been said, and I'm going against all of my economic development background and training in this one, and I apologize right now for that. But I just really feel strongly that um, there's a lot of vacancies in the area, and albeit there's a lot of interest. I still think that we don't want to oversaturate the market, and I, I and I'm leaning towards uh, supporting the residential development on this site. Okay, thank you. You're going to try this, Dan? Well, yeah, okay. sure. I, um, you know, I wouldn't be on this board if if I didn't love development, if I didn't and didn't love uh, Mesa, and, and wasn't concerned for its future. Um, I, I can go many different ways on this one. Lots of good information, lots of uh, quality people here explaining and helping us understand what, uh, what the goals are of, of the, the city. But then there's the residents of the city, you know, and so we get to see both sides. I mean, the, the, the general plan was voted upon by the city, and I respect and love the general plan. I believe it's important. I believe keeping as close to uh, the recommendations on the plan will help us be better and will help us grow and, and, and develop in such a way that, that we're all better off. We can balance ourselves as a city. Um, if I had today in front of us, here's a case for 150,000 square feet of, of office, and then here's the case for the residential, I'd probably find myself in a, a little more of a difficult situation, but I do agree with, with the board in that I. I don't think that tenant or that, that developer is, is coming around right away. Could it happen in the future? None of us quite know. Uh, we've seen many things go many different <coughs> ways. Um, but I see a, a tenant, uh, an owner, a property owner that's been uh, patient and sought after proper general plan type uses and found no success over a long period of time. I agree the market's been pretty good for a while. It seems as though we would see some activity if there was, was to be some in that spot. So I, I have trouble um, voting against the proposed case just due to that. I, I, I don't necessarily see that we'd, we'd have a, a near future of, of, a, of office or, or any tenant out there that could take that type of risk in, in an area with so little traffic and and on the edge of our rooftops. It's, it's, it would be difficult adding some people and getting a few more uh, nice projects out there, I think equally could help. I think it could. I think we could maybe um, bring more to what could happen around that freeway exit. There still is land there. We're not the adjacent parcel. I'd love to see that whole area just right around the freeway get a little more active. Um, but I don't know if it could, it, it could hold out all the way to Thomas, so, you know, I'm. I'd probably be in favor of the project as well. Thank you, Dean. Tim, you ready? I'm ready. Okay. All right. I'm with the city on this one. I think the general plan was done for purpose. I think Mesa needs to think about what it's going to be in 50 years, in 2068. Mesa is currently bigger than Miami. I think Mesa needs to start acting like it. We need to start adjusting the way we build in here so that we are taking our three residents to every job to two residents to every job or one residence to every job. I think that's the trends for uh, what people want to do in the future. People want to walk to work. People want to live in the neighborhoods close where they are. They want to do less driving. Um, that's Mesa of tomorrow. I'm more interested in what Mesa is going to be like tomorrow. We already know Mesa of today. We take lots that were designed to have anything on them and we fill it in with houses. 
We've been doing that for several years. We're really good at that. Um, I remember when, uh, I mean, when I was little, like these uh, little kids here, I came, when I first meeting, first city council meeting was when that Walmart was proposed to go in. And uh, kind of, that's probably what got me excited about these meetings, which are often tedious. Um, but uh, was watching, I don't know, 200 people go storming out of this room all at the same time. They were so mad about that Walmart going in. And now, everyone, and now everyone's glad it's there. Um, I have a lot of friends that live in this, in this uh, neighborhood, Red Mountain Ranch and Las Cendas, and they're, they're like, thank goodness that Sprouts finally showed up. There's nothing here. Finally, we have something. And they, the other comments that come, I hear from them are, why is there no restaurant? Why do I have to drive all the way down to Gilbert to a restaurant? Why is there nothing here that I can, that I can do? Why do I have to drive five miles for anything or 10 miles for everything? Um, so I think that uh, everything's changing. I think we need to plan ahead. I think we need to be like the big boy cities in this, in this country that say, you know what, this is what we planned. We're gonna go through with those plans and that's where we end, end up uh, where they're at. If we're like Tempe, Tempe waited for a long time when everyone wanted to do something mediocre and then they ended up getting the, the great development along the, the lake. I worked on a development uh, just north of there. Um, SRP wanted to put in a bunch of Class A office buildings, everything. Talked to a bunch of developers. Everyone said, oh, can't we just fill it with apartments, like three-story, four-story high apartments? And they said, no, we're going to wait for this to come in and we're going to wait for this mat to mature. And I feel like the, the city would be wise to do that. It's actually a little surprising that a, a far-sighted development or developer like Troon, uh, Desert Troon wouldn't say, hey, that's right, we are just now coming out of the economic you know, downturn. There's a lot of potential for this to be something it's right by the airport, it's right by the freeway. Um, we, should, we should look at the other uses for that. So um, I am not in favor of this project as proposed. I'm with the city that uh, we need to think about tomorrow. All right, thank you, Tim. Michelle, you gonna share a thought? Hi, uh, yes. Um, well, this one has been tough for me and um, <clears throat> just getting over the flu, I really um, <clears throat> digested this information today, uh, to be honest with everybody. Um, and I had a chance to speak with the applicant before, um, and, and I've known him for quite a many years, and I appreciate you uh, sharing with us some good arguments. Uh, I think, though, that after I heard from uh, economic development, and actually the letter from uh, Richard Adams, I thought, started to change my mind. Um, we have some staff and some volunteers in our city who've really been working hard to maintain our employment. And I have to say that, well, I've been kind of changing over the last six months, let's say, thinking about preserving employment uses. And it is it is really important. And it's uh, maybe sorry, surprise you, uh, but I think that I've kind of changed my mind and I'm actually in support of staff's recommendation for this particular site. Um, I appreciate our board members' comments and I agree with you and it was really hard, but I think at the end of the day, I, I, I agree with our uh, economic development staff and the, the planning staff. I um, think that Mesa should, I think it's a good idea to, to, to not, trying to, sorry, I'm kind of like rambling. Um, I'm in support of staff's recommendation. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Well, as I, personally, as I've listened to this, Mr. Lake, you probably got it all right as the best answer when you had that technical difficulty when we were looking at green field. I think, uh, Ms. Hassuckler, it'd make you very happy if we were to leave it like that, and, you know, and that way the city would have all of this opportunity to do something in the future. The neighbors would be happy. <clears throat> But what about the property owner? And I, and for me, uh, those who know me, I'm all about um, use rights. And the fact, what about the property owner? Do we really have the right to hold him or her or it captive? I don't think so. And the reason I say that is a general plan is basically gonna be responsive to the neighbors and uses in the area. Now we could fault the neighbors for not speaking up more vocally when the plan was up for review to make sure that had a, a lower density type use rather than this mixed use and, and surrounding alternative commercial related uses. 
Okay, you know, perhaps I say shame on you. But yet, today, we're hearing neighbors come out and, and we, we see that a lot of surveying is done. I've got to believe that neighbors are in support of something much different than what I am hearing from the city, even though that it is what the general plan calls, from, calls for. And I don't fault them whatsoever, too, for holding out. But then you get to the point, is highest economic potential equal the highest and best use? Not necessarily. And when, in my opinion, will this actually become an alternative use other than what is proposed today? I have to go back noting that my profession and what I do in that regard for all these years, highest and best use does change and you do look at trends and I totally agree is who is really going to go there? You know, if I'm, a, for all the reasons we have heard, if I am that user, I am going to go where a cluster of other similar related uses are first. I want to make sure that, you know, there's going to be demand for my facility. And I agree that if we go anything on that site, we're going to get all sorts of feedback, not probably very favorably from the neighbors because in essence they still would like to have the green lush fields. I get that. I think I would too. But again, even that's not fair. So as I look at this, I, you know, I hear both sides and I am in support of the pro project. In my opinion, I don't see any major demand occurring for the site of any intensity anytime soon. That doesn't mean that the approval of this case is necessarily going to bleed and is mandates that we may do anything with the with the adjoining parcels. They become standalones, and this one doesn't have the freeway frontage. If if it did, I think I would be more or less supportive, but it doesn't. I think what's proposed is a very logical use. So I guess that tells you where I'm at on this too. So, board members, that being said, is there anybody else that would like to make a comment before we vote? But I guess we better have a motion first before I get too carried away here. So, and whoever is going to ask, yes, some, Tim. There were some things that the city had recommended if that we, if we do okay the project, there were some, weren't there some recommendations you had about, was it size of the lots or, or something think, with how they were going to use it, or is that all resolved? I was just going to ask for that. Whoever okay. makes this motion, we need to have some rationale as to why. I guess, may, Chair, you may first to jump in on, on uh, yes. uh, Board Member Boyle's comments. So with regard to the zoning, we did have some issues there, but those are in the conditions of approval associated with the zoning case, and they have agreed to those. So as the chair was just starting to say, the first thing we need to consider by itself is the, the general plan uh, and request that. and being clear with the reasons for what I suspect is going to be a motion for approval of the, of the change so that we can have that for the record, the reasons why, because it is so clearly against the general plan and sub area plan. So we need to have that documented. Okay. So thank you, whoever chooses to make this motion, if you keep that in mind. Are you saying that we should, we should say... Do we have to have like some reasons why we why we think the plan should be amended or whoever makes the motion should include as part of that motion a clear statement of their reasons why again assuming it's going to be a motion for approval of the request right uh, okay so either way so you would like to have the reasons spelled out as a as an aid to counsel is that correct, correct? okay well my reasons are against so I can't what's that. <laughs> If you want to go ahead and make a motion to deny, then you could start. Right, but that's going to get voted down. So someone that is articulate and is going to win this thing, why don't you <laughs> come up with your reasons? <laughs> Just we need the Jeopardy music going right now. A little drum beat. Well, obviously, there's a lot of contemplation going on here. Excuse me, sir. <coughs> so is it going to be rezoned then to... <coughs> Nothing has happened yet. Okay. 
Jessica, are you going to give it a try? Jennifer, did you want to? Or? Are you working on one? So the, the thing would be, if, if you're still in support, then do you have, you know, three or four items? You, I believe in your comments, you identified at least that many. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you ought to just summarize those again. <clears throat> the other thought we might have, if we want to add to them, we could always amend the motion that you make. You know, to add. Eight of others. You want to do it, Shelley? Okay. So I, I'll give it a shot here. Um, just make sure that I get the general plan. It was the first one on the agenda, correct? Yes, okay. that's the, the we're so strictly talking. So I, I would make a recommendation that we approve. Gosh, I hate getting old. We approved ZON 17-00320, District 5, the 5800 through 5900 blocks of East Thomas Road. 572. Did I say something wrong? Yeah, you said you said the three two zero. That's the zoning need. What the five? Oh, okay, that's what I was. Okay, that's what I was afraid of. Let's start over. I'd like to make a motion that we approve zoning case ZON seventeen dash zero zero five seven two district five, the fifty eight hundred block fifty eight hundred through fifty nine hundred block of East Thomas Road, <clears throat> South Side, and thirty four hundred through thirty five hundred blocks of North Wrecker Road West Side. This is a minor general plan amendment to change the character type from mixed use activity district to res neighborhood. The, this request will allow the development of a single resident subdivision. And the, uh, this is because this is a general plan amendment. The, the reason um, that I'm making this motion is I, I believe that um, That there's a lot of vacant areas in the in the a lot of vacant um, properties in the area, a lot of vacant commercial buildings in the area, and I don't feel like um, it will. It would, this would if we create this uh, into uh, another industrial or office complex, it'll be over an overabundance of of those uses in the area. Um, I believe that even retail or or a mixed use type development, there's a lot of retail. That is vacant, and and I don't think that um, this would it would create an oversaturation of the market. Um, the the other uh, I guess reason that there's several different reasons that I was looking at this, and and um, one of them I, I think that a hotel site on the uh, hotel use on the site is not feasible, or somebody would have done it. I think this property owner has owned this property for 12 years. It's been, it was annexed into the city of Mesa 35 years ago and nothing has happened on this site. Um, so those are two of the, two of the reasons that I'm, I'm in favor of a residential development. I, uh, is, is that enough reason? Do I need to go on and explain why? No. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Okay, is there, a, I think Shelley, is there a second? I'll make a second. That any other discussion? Okay, then please vote. Okay, the motion passes. We have two, four, five in favor, two nays, um, and um, that would be board members Boyle and, and board member Dalkey, and the others are in favor. So that being said. Let's move on to the next companion cases. And so I don't know if there's any discussion we want to have before I entertain a motion on these other two. Let me just go ahead. Would you like to go ahead, Shelley? Let me just read each one. I turn on That'd my mic. That'd be fine. Thank you. So if I read them both in, then we're good on both sides. Okay. So uh, I would like to make a recommendation that we approve a ZON 17. <coughs> Learn. ZON 17-00320, District 5, along with the preliminary plat of villas at Red Mountain, District 5. This is the 5800 through 5900 blocks of East Thomas Road on the south side and 3400 through 3500 blocks on the north side, North Wrecker Road on the west side. 
This is a rezoning from RS90 to RSL-4.5 PAD and site plan review, along with a preliminary plat review, or preliminary plat approval. And I'd make a recommendation that we approve that. Oh, one more thing too, sorry. Along with all the conditions of approval that are associated with the zoning case ZON 17-00320. Okay, thank you. I'll make a second. All right, we have a, um, a motion and a second. Um, any discussion? No, please vote. Okay, this vote is for both companion cases and it, they do pass, um, same split. All in favor with the exception of board members Dalkey and Boyle. That being said, that concludes the cases we have on our agenda for today. John, if I might ask, is there any other business that we need to attend to? Okay. I thank you again all for being here and your civility in this um, case, and, and we appreciate the comments that have been shared. I will now entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll Thank second. you, Michelle. Thank I'll you. Second. second, Shelley. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, <coughs> meeting adjourned. We'll see you next month. <laughs>